My name's Sean Fitzgerald. I'm, I'm based up in the northwest of Ireland. Started getting into Celtic art in the 80s, and one day I went into a small health food shop there, and I saw some beautiful artwork by uh, what I presumed was a female called Courtney Davis. And um, I'd been very familiar, of course, with Jim Fitzpatrick's work here in Ireland and then it was just okay who's this Courtney Davis Who, who's this and I'm looking at the back okay they're based in the UK and then it was to how do I get more of their stuff okay all I had at the time was a postcard of Courtney's but you know yourself you look at the work you get lost in knots you'll go back you'll find something else that you never saw before um, so you always imagine maybe this um, scribe this monk like character sitting in a tower with this, you know, um, <laughs> feather pen, scribbling all these knotworks. Um, so it was only a pleasure then to meet Courtney all these years later. And I was very lucky that uh, Courtney published my, my own book, The Last Battle of Moitura, uh, which I'm still very honored and, and flattered by to, to get somebody, um, you know, as who I was a fan of, of your art for so many years. Yeah, so anyway, I, I've been doing Celtic art for a long time. My book came out with Courtney's, and it's to even visit here in the studio is, 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 is fantastic because I flick through his books, and it's a case of you're just inspired by everyone, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's that's my background. <laughs> <laughs>
what you know what my mother was because my dad died when he was quite young mm. um but um, so it's kind of like um you know um, now i'm kind of understanding and, and kind of stuff like that you but, can reflect um, on it i can reflect yeah, on yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. And what about yeah. no right so that's young courtney yeah what about no and you kind of go oh, do you mind what age do you know courtney it doesn't matter it well matter. i should be 75 this year 75 yeah. so then you think all right what's the difference between young courtney and 75 year old courtney in your uh direction of your work and the way you view your work yeah that's a big question isn't it well i guess um i've, I've been extremely lucky right as an artist that um, in all those years um, there wasn't a time when I didn't go down to the drawing board and I didn't have a job to do. Mm. I always had either one book or two books that I was working on at the same Brilliant. time. Yeah. And, um, and I, you know, I thank you universe for that. I mean, they gave me a very hard time. Um, <laughs> well, I, you know, you kind of think to yourself, all you want to do is paint and they're chucking in all this bloody, um, um, stuff um but but, it, but it's all i mean it's as, as i've learned you know it's energy and what i and what i do uh, when each of the big paintings when i started i, I used to go and see amma mother amma yeah, yeah. yeah. and um one yeah, yeah. yeah and one day she gave me a little bag of ash right and um everybody else getting sweets but i got this bag of ash and so i used to i had some orosoma christ oil right and um, and I would get the um, get the oil and run it down my forehead like that. Then get dip into the ash and run it down. And then I would say to the universe, throw everything you can at me while I do this painting. Wow. So that energetically there's going to be so much power in this painting. And I had things like um, uh, one time um, this, this this electric kettle just jumped off the shelf. I mean, just jumped off the blinking shelf. And um, I've had so many, um, especially with the Merlin things, that um, electrical things. I mean, I had this um, video cap. I was doing this um, 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 thing on the BBC, um, um, BBC television many years ago. And my wife at the time um, was videoed it, videoed me. And, um, and, the, and the camera stopped. And so we took it in the next day. For the, to be fixed, and he said, "I've never seen anything like it. It actually melted inside, and that's been. Wow. I mean, that's. I mean, I, I, I've had so, well, so many stories about. Um, you know, the energy becomes really kind of playful and um, and crazy sometimes. Mm. And it's kind of you know, when I'm working on the painting, I'm kind of what I'm doing is I'm pulling all that energy in, and then fo refocusing it onto um, onto the art." Like a lot of people would see their, um, well, that's an amazing story. Sorry, I don't mean to yeah. just jump in. Uh, <laughs> but you know, a lot of people like would see um, maybe drawing as escapism or kind of like a meditation. Yeah. Whereas yours is, no. it's almost like a ritual. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's oh, a very I mean, powerful. It, it is. I mean, it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So do you kind of prep yourself, right? I'm going drawing. This is going to be. Oh, oh yeah, as I say, you know, that was the process I used to do wow. um, with each of the large paintings. That's what um, it just felt like um, uh, because of um, this sort of awakening experience. What happened was that in 2012 was that I'd been living in my car and um, I hadn't painted. Merlin had stepped away for a year and, um, and I couldn't paint, I couldn't do anything and I had this crazy girlfriend at the time. And so um, my whole life was in in such a kind of crazy mess. And um, I went to bed one night and I woke up about two or three o'clock in the morning and Courtney wasn't in the room. All it was was a room. And um, I was lucky that um, I had somebody that um, was able to talk Courtney back again. But the connection between um, the persona of Courtney and the awareness that was in the room never totally reconnected mm -hmm. and so it's like you know although our Courtney's chatting away here right there is actually um, there's an awareness of Courtney chatting away 
yeah, you understand? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, so I was talking to a guy um, without going off subject. Well, it is. But he was um, he was in the army, and he was in a he was flying like a Spitfire type thing, or maybe that's how I imagined it. And he said the engine went, and he said he said, oh shit, I'm, I'm gonna die. And he said it was going down, and he said like that, he said it was this, he suddenly was sitting in, yeah. behind him, and he was looking at himself, Yeah. and he said he was going down, and next thing the engine kicked back in, and he said it just changed his life forever, oh, yeah. Yeah. and how he reacted, yeah. and yeah. you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. I find you're very, um, you're very relaxed, uh, relaxed about your work, even though it's very important to you, and, and to a lot more of us. Um, but it's like a lot of people would say, as artists, you have to be driven to sell, sell, sell. Yeah. Was you a lot more um, calm about it? Well, and yeah. I mean, the thing was that before 2012, I was an artist that was sell, sell, sell. Right. Yeah. Um, but then I just saw um, um, that um, life kind of um, in a more playful, playful way. So although, although things do happen negatively and stuff like that, but but instead you just kind of view them as um, a lesson to be learned, and and it's not like um, oh poor Courtney, you know? yeah, yeah, um, you know. I mean, I spent so many years shaking my fists, you know, at Merlin or whatever because um, all the chaotic situations that um, I mean, I lost the business four times, you know, through and. Um, so um, yeah, and when you uh, to go back to Merlin, when you lost the business, or when you came here, and when things started yeah. gone wrong. So, do you have a, like did, did that Merlin energy go before any of that stuff happened, or was it kind of after it happened? What was the general feeling of it, if that makes sense? Like so, when you came here, oh here, and yeah. we say you ended up sleeping in your car, yeah. Was Merlin gone? So was there that oh, feeling yeah, there was of that, that real loneliness? There, there, there was like, absolute, yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm, you know, um, um, quite often when I was, um, when Merlin um, was close, my, I used to, um, my hands would go like that, and um, and I would kind of shake them, and then before, as soon as I forgot, forgot about it, my hands were back like that. And so that was one way that um, um, I could sense his presence was around me. And another way was um, I would have um, like a spiral of energy and it would um, press really deep into my palm and get really, really hot. And, and some people could actually put their hand over and they could feel the spiral moving. Um, but, um, yeah. So, <laughs> like, um, sorry, I don't, maybe I'm focusing too much on it, but Okay, so then when things started happening again, yeah. when, you opened it, when did the Merlin energy come back in? Was it well, like when... I mean, it's come, it's, it's just come gradually, mm. you know, back in, I, I, in a sense, I feel like I've almost um, let it, um, as, as I, I've been doing, especially doing these videos and stuff, I've been reflecting on all that time together. I mean, he was a teacher. He was my yeah. teacher. He taught me. Um, but let's, let's say it's a Merlin. I, call, I used to call it a Merlin energy because uh, there was Merlin, this commission that started it all. But perhaps it was um, it was more Celtic or even a Celtic scribe, mm. you know. Um, so um, um, and that's why um, the. Uh, all the paintings and stuff in this in this place, most of it is is quite new, right? Um, my all those fifty three books that I created, they were Celtic books. There's nothing really. There's no Celtic pattern work in this gallery. Um, so there's like there's a whole there's a whole catalogue of um, hundreds thousands of Celtic designs. Um, all stashed away in um, folders and, and kind of stuff like that and it's almost like um, um, 
and you know when I came here I thought that um, there was going to be a great interest in the Celtic thing well, the same as like St Patrick I had all these St Patrick pictures and, um, mm. and nobody was interested in St Patrick St Patrick's <laughs> over there too isn't he so. <laughs> yeah so yeah so um, um, so it's kind of um, it's you know the, the art has kind of really really changed and it's become um, the Celtic thing isn't so so important in the paintings sure. I mean there's there's you know there's bits and pieces of it but um, no it's mm. Mm. you know you mentioned um, that is this making sense it does it does make sense <laughs> uh, so you mentioned right that Merlin or this Celtic type scribe yeah. was teaching you yeah okay I, it's just a, a, you know what it is I'm fascinated on the ritual aspect of how how would you give advice to a young artist who is saying how do I bring that ritual element to my work how do I get that yeah. power that Courtney has in his work that he's bringing in all these things yeah. what would be your advice to them see I don't know the mechanics of yeah. it I've been just, I've just been extremely lucky that um for whatever reason, um, the energy came came in, into my life and um, and changed my life. I mean, you know, uh, um, I um, I always say I'm like a, a perpetual phoenix rising from the ashes mm. because I because it hasn't been absolutely no way has it been an easy journey um, um, doing this. But um, for the the potency in the art. It needed me to um, to go through this um, this struggle, and you know, there's, I mean, artists throughout the ages, you know, yeah. even musicians, you know, um, they all kind of struggle with, um, you know. It does, and they're they kind of, it adds their character, adds yeah. to the whole thing, Absolutely. doesn't it? And it, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of sad in a way mm. that we want our artists and musicians yeah. to be struggling. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. It's like. Yeah. It wouldn't be half as fun if it was a boring journey, really, would it? Yeah, like, no, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> you no. Know, you know, I could tell, you know, um, I tried to be really, really honest mm. in, um, and, um, you know, I, I'll answer most, you know, pretty much anything, you know, um, in the questions in what I'm, I'm kind of doing. And, because um, um, I don't... When I see um, some uh, artists and they're all kind of full of me, 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 mm. and um, and for me, um, um, that wouldn't work. Certainly wouldn't work here if I was, you know, like a prima donna, you know, wandering around here because um, uh, people would see see through that, you know, really good, you know. But what they do, they they connect to, they connect to the um, the honesty, you know. Yeah. And um, and I think that um, um, when you when you if you're going to be creative, you need to be kind of honest and um, um, try not to um, um, you know steal somebody else's idea or you know I mean although I mean with art you know throughout the ages everybody's been borrowing yeah. bits and pieces so um, but um, like music like music yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but um, yeah but I, I you know through my work I tried um, to um, to keep you know kind of solitary and, and for years it was easy because to say you know there was no um, um, there was no internet or anything like that mm -hmm. I mean I, I used to have a vast um, library of um, of art book of of, um, of artifacts mm. and stuff like that, you know, which um, I would work from um, and stuff like that. But uh, oh. and I was really, I mean, it was such an interesting time, and especially because I was doing stuff for like Thames and Hudson and people like that. And so I I um, I would contact like Southampton University has got um, a huge collection of, um, I mean, we're talking huge books. Um, which were um, facsimiles of like Book of Kells and all these other things. Yeah. And they would send them through the bloody post to me. Brilliant. I mean, they, they must have worth a fortune. 
you know. And um, I, I mean, it was wonderful. You know, um, I contacted Trinity College because um, I was um, I was doing a um, book on um, Irish illuminated books, and um, and I wanted one on I think you call it the Cathage Cathage. Done, it was a, the book that was done by um, um, Column Seal, and because the Column Seal was a, a, a scribe as well. Oh, okay, right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, um, it was. It was called. What was it called? The Book of. Book of. Like Col 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 Kill. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, is it? Is it's, it's the Book of? It's Iona. Is it the um, the one? No, no, no. Uh, but he used to um, supposedly they used to carry it. In the front, in the in the war, but wasn't this book anyway? There was a war about this book. There was a battle. Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, he, yeah, yeah, that's why he had to go to Scotland because yeah. um, um, it was the first copyright. Yeah, yes, copied that's the book. it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, so I contacted Trinity, Trinity College so I could um, have a, some um, qu some quality photographs, and they photocopied the entire book and sent it to me. I mean, I had wow. I'm a, I just, um, yeah. <laughs> so, but but at the time, see, um, um, I know Jim Fat Fitzpatrick was doing his thing, but mm. nobody was doing what I was doing. I was um, kind of um, there was gospel books which were badly damaged because they used to put them in water and bless the cows with and all this kind of stuff. Okay. And so the pages were all twisted, and so I would rebuild the, the, the wow. paintings and stuff. And yeah, I mean. Yeah, and I, was doing, and I was doing a page a bloody day. A page a day. Wow. I mean, those are those are those those were all black and white, but um, mm. but even so, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. incredible. I know, and it's it's it. When I when I look back at any of these paintings, and I look at them, and I think to myself, Jesus, when I wouldn't know where to bloody start. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wouldn't know where. You know, it's nothing. It's nothing about Courtney. You know, mm -hmm. you know. I always say that um, when I was working with Merlin, um, there was always um, a sense that um, um, my hand was painting the, the picture. Um, but um, uh, since um, the uh, the thing in 2012, it's like it's more of um, actually it's the universe moving. So the paper, the paint, the brush is just the universe in motion, and it's. So do you would you view yourself sometimes like more like a channel that you're that something yeah, is going yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Oh absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. You know, people you know, people say, you know, oh you you know, um you must work on how the idea of it and to say most of the time it's just purely um a very rough outline. Hmm. And then the, I I let the painting then create itself. Well, and um, in the um, in the early days with Merlin, um, um, I I would there were some paintings that I would finish painting, and then um, I I would get the impression that I had to put another painting on top of this painting, and so I would then paint another painting on top of the painting, right? And it, so it was like you could you could sense there was something going on beyond beyond that painting yeah but you yeah. just didn't know quite, quite so yeah i mean you know it's all the time is kind of trusting and stuff you know Jeez. yeah yeah that's fascinating you were you were talking about um artifacts and that um and we pointed at the Colin kill one here oh yeah tell me what was was it this there was someone gave you something. Oh yeah, something? yeah, yeah. That's a relic of. That's his relic. Yeah, from the Vatican. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How how did you get that? I tell you, my, <laughs> I got um, on that side is um, is Bridget and Bridget. Oh no. And um, supposedly it's the correct St. Bridget because there's a few St. Bridget. Could we show that on the camera, or do you want to? Yeah, well, I'll put it on. Um, I'll add it on. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come kill. Yeah. I'm more, no offence to call him killer, more interested in Bridget. Do you want to tell me a bit more about Bridget and how you got this? And what, what did it influence your work and things like that? Or Well, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you know, I, 
I spent so I spent all these forty odd years, you know, uh, painting, right? Mm. And um, but in between, I still managed to be married four times, right? Right. <laughs> the trouble was that um, they would kind of see me as this artist who'd done all this, you know. But the but when they actually got to see the um, um, but I was actually in the in the um, uh, the studio like eight o'clock in the morning till nine ten o'clock at night, and mm. so gradually, you know, each time the the relationships um, kind of died because um, they weren't getting the attention. Mm. So I guess um, you know when I was talking before about um, the kind of being by the tree and being kind of um, embraced, I guess. It would probably have been for me. It would have been Bridget, because at, at that time um, I didn't really know too much about all the gods and the gods, the goddesses and stuff like that. Mm. And so, but that that was somebody that um, that um, I felt a connection with, um, and I'd done quite a few Bridget paintings before um, wow. I came here. So, yeah. So, and and so that was why I dedicated that corner to. Um, it's they used to, we used to have a lot of women's groups that came here and stuff like, and that was that was for them. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's quite a mix of stuff. You've uh, like there's a shill and a gig. Yeah, and I mean, uh, th stuff gets um, um, stuff gets left here. Yeah. You know, um, um, especially this on this um, one behind us here. Um, that um, I, I'm always find I'm always finding new things that people have added uh, to it and that's that's i mean that's really lovely you know the, mm. the people stick little notes under bits of stone and, and that's of, yeah so it's so that it becomes a living thing you know yeah tell me about this this image so life spirit um The thing is that um, um, with a lot of with a lot of the paintings is that um, I have no idea what the story. But the early paintings that I was doing, right, um, they would be full of symbology, mm -hmm. right. I mean, full of symbology, and um, there was actually so much symbology in, in the painting that it actually killed the painting. It made okay. the painting dead because it was it was just trying too hard. Mm -hmm. And um, and then for the time when some of the um, things that um, the energies wouldn't let me add to the picture was I'd, I'd find a symbol I thought oh that that looks nice I'll go around and they would take that out and so the paintings became became the symbols yeah it became the symbol and um, it's really interesting when I've done um, some exhibitions and um, people come up. And you get somebody will tell you the story of the painting as yeah, they see yeah. it, and then somebody else will come, and they'll tell you a totally different story, but it'll all fit, you know. Yeah. And so um, I kind of I leave, you know, like like with the energies really, you know, I let the energies um, create the painting. Um, sometimes I do get a kind of glimpse, um, but um, I mean I've had I've had experiences where. Um, when, when I was doing a book called Celtic Mandalas, right, mm. and um, and I was, and one of them was quite large, and um, I started to fall into into the fall into the centre of the picture, and I literally grabbed the um, the drawing board because I thought I was going to go, mm. and um, so they're kind of like portals. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, and so fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's I mean, from, what, what you have to understand is that um, in all the books, right, um, that I've done, I don't talk about any of this. Right? Yeah, it's exactly. only it's actually only since coming to Tara and coming to this place that I've actually started to do, to um, verbally verbally kind of express yeah. it. Yeah. Like. Well, the thing is that although I was married four times, um, because um, I was I had so many hours in the studio painting 
and you kind of like almost like you have conversations with yourself mm. and so quite often I would um, go back home um, to see my wife and I would thought that I had the conversation as conversation with her so she would say you know for Christ's sake talk to me <laughs> <laughs> and I've kind of done, done all the talk yeah but um yeah yeah so it's fascinating like I was I was in Dublin recently and uh it was you know the stained glass artist Harry Clark oh yeah 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 and I was in the gallery and there's a like a dark room and it shows these yeah. different panels of Harry Clark and there was a, a, a this person came in and they were standing next to me and they were looking at it and they were looking at it and if I'm honest I was kind of just looking at the details and just yeah. really enjoying the visual and they started talking aloud I don't think it was for my benefit it was just, they were just thinking aloud and then they kind of turned to me and this means this this means this and they had a whole story yeah so when you're going back to this it's like they could have been right like don't get me yeah wrong. yeah could have been yeah but it's, I, I suppose you, it's kind of creating a port. We all have our own journey. We all have our own yeah. story. So it's probably, it's yeah. a really great thing that people can create their own stories yeah. around this. And Absolutely. This means that and this means, and whereas that isn't necessarily what it started off to be. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, yeah. It could be a, yeah. Know, yeah. even more powerful yeah. than that in that way. Yeah. Like, you know? And the thing with these paintings is also, is that um, um, I, um, I did them on board and then I, I, I varnished and waxed them, mm. so I actually consciously, yeah, I say to people, you can touch the picture. I'm quite happy for people to touch the picture because well, they just feel like sometimes energetically they feel yeah, really drawn can. to yes. a certain yeah. part of the painting. So, yeah. Can I ask? And, what the, and, it's, uh, and it's almost like you know, the dirtier it becomes, the the more alive it becomes. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. See the stones. Yeah. What do they represent? The no idea. Are? Again, no idea. I like no. that answer. That's a good yeah. answer. Yeah, 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 no, no. And I'm, you know, yeah, over and over again, I'm asked this. But, um, um, but you, you know, all I'm doing is, is like some channeling, um, yeah. you know, the stuff and, um, and let it kind of develop. Yeah. So there's almost like, um, there's all these different stages of Courtney Davis. You're kind of like David Bowie. You have to, yeah, you have the different phase. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So for you were like, you were almost like that scribe locked in the tower. Yeah. Doing all this early stuff. Yeah. Fixing up these books that were destroyed of kind of recreating. And of course, then was the Merlin, the Mandelas. I could mm. be even missing out a phase here. Yeah. And then in Ireland, there's this, um, so I don't know what the word would be, but it's this real strong pagan kind of. <laughs> vibe yeah. off your stuff it's, yeah. it's very uh, I don't know what to say pagan is just probably too loose a word it's the only one I can think of like but it's very uh, feral very yeah. uh, there's a wilder feel about yeah. it like. see I've never gone into into that um, um, side of it I had a, a short period where um, the energy changed and um, um I, I would say that it's, it's an energy called Grey Wolf that came. And I did a, a series of about, about six shamanic paintings. Um, okay. But um, um, no, I've never... Um, I've, I, I actually did start a, a book called Celtic Grotesque. Oh, I love some of that. What happened to that? <laughs> I did about three pictures and it was kind of horn gods and kind of stuff like that. And, um, and it just, I just thought, so, do you know what I call this? This is no, so yeah. not you. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. But yeah. it's nice to explore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. But, and um, yeah. Tell, what, tell me the, 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 the grey wolf. What, what, what did that entail? What was the, did I get, it was grey wolf? Yeah, so uh, um, again, if you imagine, you know, um, um, the energies and, um, um, it's suddenly kind of, but, but if you think of it like more like a tuning a radio, mm -hmm. and you're moving from one station to another, and for whatever reason, um, I was tuned to a different channel um, for a short period of time, and I kind of created um, this art. Um, okay. But um, uh, as with Merlin. Um, 
no, none of them have ever spoken to me. Yeah. Right. Is it more I mean, like a, a sense? Or yeah, it's always yeah. it's always just a sense. You know, I've had well, when we when we did the first the Merlin book many 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 years ago, and um, we had um, um, all these we had these letters come through. One was from a lady in America, right, who said that she'd um, captured Merlin in a wooden box. And she brought him, brought him back to um, America. So yeah. there's absolutely no way that he communicates with you. And then there was a, a a women a women's group in I think they were in Wales or something, and they said that um, they were the 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 main source of Merlin, and that um, there's no way that he could be speaking through um, Peter who who wrote the book. And so, uh, but if, but in future, anything that um, that that he that um, is said to him has to go through them first. And ah, come on! Man. <laughs> <laughs> but again, so, like like you say, like you you earlier you said it was like it's it's like a Merlin energy, but it's also could be this older scribe. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. Um, mm. And you know when you were saying about the grey wolf, is that Merlin? Is Merlin or that energy still there as well at the same time? No. No. No, he didn't feel okay. yeah, like yeah. that. No, no. What's the energy in, in on Tara Hill? Like as as a okay, I'm throwing you on the label here, but as a Celtic artist, right? Yeah. For want of a better word. Um on the hill of Tara, that that's to me that's the ultimate, like you're here on Tara Hill. This ceremonial space. Yeah. What's the energy like working here? Here with where you're surrounded by so much like Yeah. What's the energy like here? That's a big question. You know. <laughs> well, I, I find I, you, you're going to be shocked. Yeah, right. Yeah. I feel in some ways I feel like a cheat. Right. Yeah. Is that um, um, I'm actually I'm here and um, and obviously um, I have reverence for the place because it is what it is, magic mystery and stuff like that. But. Um, um, Oh God, I'm going to say it's a hill and there's stuff on the hill yeah. and stuff like that and uh, for a lot of people um, they kind of um, they were, especially the, all the groups that come here they, they've probably been months um, booking their t planes and stuff and so yeah. some that come here they're kind of they're expecting um, some kind of light of explosion and um, and the and the, the ego is very good Mm. Uh, creating um, magic, if you know, yeah, and so uh, they'll come back thinking that they've had some wonderful experience. Um, I try to, um, I, um, I have reverence for, for the place, but I, I try not to um, get drawn into the story. Yeah, I'm just, you know, my my part of being on tower is 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 this gallery and keeping it open and. Um, and supporting the people that are coming into the gallery, you know that's, hmm. you know. Well, it's interesting you say I'm, that. I'm the whole. I'm a whole. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm a, a magical relic. <laughs> no. Well, you know what it is. Yeah, I think. No, of course you have the cafe. But, yeah. And you have your, the bookshop. Yeah. But it is you've you've created this hub here, really. Like, okay, you could say, oh, it's a gallery. Yeah. But it's created a hub for oh, yeah. people to call in and chat. Yeah. And then you have a newsletter. And stuff like this. Yeah. That's for free outside the door. Yeah. So, like, even if the place is closed or if it's you're gone for lunch. Yeah. You know what's happening here in Tara because a lot of people they, they want that uh, sense of community when you come up here. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. Th there is yeah. a sense of community, but it's nice to have that little yeah. space, a social yeah. space. Almost, yeah. Right? I mean, I did hope because uh, because I I live quite close to Glastonbury and had lots of dealings with Glastonbury. Um, and they've got, they have a wonderful letter, um, newspaper, mm. and and if there's, if there's anything going on, you know, in um, with events and stuff like that, it's in that newspaper. Yeah. So when I came here, I I tried to recreate that, but but it was um, um, the groups kind of like to be kind of secret and. Yeah and small and stuff and they don't want you know so it, it never kind of that never kind of worked but um but we have events here and stuff like that yeah so. 
Well, you see, there's always a lot of stuff on the newsletter. Yeah. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. And what's that every every month, is it? Or something? Yeah, pretty much every month. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you find yeah. all the time to do all this, Corny? Between running all this space. Oh, no. Drawing yeah, to yeah, your yeah, newsletter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I get through. Because you seem very relaxed. Yeah, I mean, I get through 200 night lights a, a week. Right. <laughs> which I burn in this bed. Like, yeah. So in the mornings, I come down and I'm. Um, sorting out all the candles outside inside and stuff mm. like that and then um and then then i've got the birds i feed all the birds and the crows outside and, and there's and so, the cat the travel. and there's the cat yeah, yeah, yeah. and so it's like um yeah it's, uh, so even before i have my breakfast it, it, that's you know it's quite busy you know i don't know it just life seems to i just jog along and um, yeah. i don't let um um things kind of um you know um, get on top really i just you you're, you know you know i work from the present sure and um you know and if i if i can do one thing then um and, and then I, uh, you know i can see that's done and then i relax and then i'll start with something else mm. but, um, so i'm not going to ask you to compare or anything like that but uh what was life like working and drawing in Glastonbury as another very oh no I, I didn't I never I never worked in okay. Glastonbury I just um, um, I, oh you come across the newsletter well yeah 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 I mean sure. the shops used to have my cards and I, get I did a couple of book signings there and stuff like mm. that in the past yeah 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 I've got a lot of friends there brilliant brilliant yeah um, give us a bit of a history of the shop then here your space yeah well when I came here um, so just over seven years ago, um, this was an empty barn, hmm. and um, and so I, I put up um, a few um, a few paintings, just hung them on. There was uh, nails in the wa in the wall, and so I just hung them on the wall. And um, and were these the mandalas, or were these were ones that you um, created here? Yeah, that would have been there. Mm. Um, yeah, there would have been a couple here that, um, um, yeah, those, yeah, those two in the corner were here. And then um, what happened was that interesting story, right? I um, I moved to West Cork, right, when I came to, and um, and. Um, I um, I started this painting of um, of Tara, and for some for whatever reason it stopped um, about halfway through, and I could not get anywhere near the painting. It just it, it was just hopeless. Hmm. And um, but then when I came, when I was invited here for two months, I just felt well maybe you know the painting will start up here, and so I plonked the painting right in the mid middle of the room right and um, I started painting and I was about two-thirds of the way through and um, this Arab Sheikh came in and um, he looked at the painting and said I want to buy that wow. and um, I earned some it's a, a vast amount of money and um, this is when you were still sleeping in your car and stuff, yeah really? when, but no oh, just, were, I was yeah. sleeping upstairs okay. um, but that gave me enough money um, and um, that I created all, all this. Wow. And so, so the, like, the universe again, provided so, uh, like yeah. it's... Uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Okay, I think... I think the big, the big um, difference, right, um, um, before coming to Tara was that um, um, although I was um, creating all this art, um, I was still kind of like in denial of um, um, I thought that when I had the experience in 2012, right, I thought that I'd been on a spiritual journey for like 40 odd years. Hmm. And the experience I had um, in that room made me realize that I hadn't even started. I hadn't even, so I've been playing at spirituality, mm. but I hadn't 
started at all. And, um, and so um, it was a difference between um, like playing the part of being this spiritual guy, you know, doing spiritual art and stuff like that, and to actually um, be in the space um, 24-7, yeah. you know? And that um, everything you're doing, you're doing with reverence yeah, and that, and that was that was the big thing, and um, and so I think you know, you know that was the big change in Courtney. Then because before that it was um, I was always searching for money, you know, needed money and stuff, and you kind of like, um, and um, because the the pressure for money is so strong, you're actually blocking. And but what happened when I came here was that um, this. I sold this painting, which paid for this to to happen, and um, it was like, um, and, and I and I still had some money over, and it was like for the first time in my life, I had some money in my pocket. It, mm. If I had a three euro in my pocket before, and I, I had enough to buy an americano, mm. that was that was the highlight of my bloody yeah, the, day. Yeah, the highlight. Yeah. 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 Um, but um, yeah, so all the pressure, and, and what happened was that the um, because I was easing up on the pressure, and um, so s stuff started coming in, things started to happen. You know, I sold another painting, and um, wow. about um, I think it was about two or three weeks after, um, and um, and so it was like um, you know it had kick started some whole new thing, and um, and so it goes on, you know. That's how it goes on. How long yeah. have you been here now? Well, it's nearly seven and a half years now. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You certainly. You're well, one of the I mean, the, the amazing thing is that um, um, my life used to be years ago, um, and when my tube of toothpaste ran out, that was when I moved. I mean, literally, I. Wow. It was like, um, and for for a long, long time, even through my marriages. Um, only ever lived in a place for like three years and um, for them whatever reason you know hmm. change happened and stuff like that yeah wow. yeah so That's I've had I mean the nice thing is that um, I've had all these different w lives you know yeah yeah so it's you know it's really it's really cool absolutely yeah? you know wow yeah because you're kind of like in the scale of time it's only seven years but you're kind of really part so much part of the hill of I know I know yeah 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 it's and, and again I think it's more to do with the energies that um, um, I didn't place myself um, when I first came here I did three talks just so that people knew who I, who I was yeah. and then um, and I haven't given a talk in mm. here since in all those seven years wow. um, um, but it was just to kind of say, well, this is this is who I am, you know. Yeah. And um, but um, I mean, I'm just um, ever, uh, ever so thankful to the the beloved universe, to Ireland, you know, really um, looking after me, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing yeah. that the space you've created, like it's, it's something else. Yeah, really yeah. yeah. Oh, I would never ever have believed. I had no, if somebody had said to me that um, you know, at my age, you know, you'd have a gallery and I mean, we used to have 30, 35 events a month in here once upon a time. This place was buzzing. Wow. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, you know, hopefully um, it'll, um, mm. I think it'll come in a, it'll, it's going to obviously going to, it's going to change, you know, from the way it was. But um, it's it just shows um, that it's more, and more the importance of a place like this being here. I think. I think the road being built and the whole Save Tara campaign yeah, yeah, yeah. and the protests mm. really pushed it. I, its importance, like obviously its importance was always there, but its importance to a lot of people and I think it really, yeah. Yeah. I, oh, you know, I, mm. I would imagine it just really, it brought a lot more people onto the hill, didn't yeah. it? Like it's, um, and yeah. it, again, yeah, you have the cafe, which is a great cafe, but it, it's, it's lovely then to have this. Mm call in place yeah. and yeah hello there's yeah. Courtney Davis <laughs> you know I was in here the day um Phil uh Phil who used to do the tattoo festival down in Cove and Cork and he came in and he was like is that Courtney Davis and again he's like right and he's been tattooing for years and he's like 
Thank you so much for all the tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> you must meet people oh, yeah, yeah. covering oh, your stuff. Oh, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine if you're really old sometimes, you know, when somebody comes in in their kind of late 40s and said, oh, I've been using your stuff <laughs> since I was a teenager. You know? <laughs> and is it true, or is this a rumour, Is was some of your stuff used for the Viking TV show? Some of the Celtic They did, li of your they licensed... Novel? Um, my one of my Viking books, yeah, yeah. Oh, for, for, for not tattoos, for tattoos, yeah, okay, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, that's incredible, yeah. And then I'd yeah. say a lot of your stuff gets bootlegged because I've been over oh, yeah, in yeah, stalls yeah. and I was like, yeah, wow, that's Courtney Dev, and it might yeah. be a big wall hanging, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. This and yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose you, there's nowhere to go. I, I, I was out, I was outside um, the Dalalala's temple, right in Dharamsala, yeah, and there was a market stall. And it had one of my pictures hanging on the, as a tapestry hanging on the blinking stall. I mean, I, the thought that maybe the Dalai Lama might have gone through there and seen that blinking picture. I mean, there was yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a feel good factor. Oh yeah, yeah oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of the stuff. Um, yeah. There's just so much stuff, the jewelry wow. and all kinds of stuff going on out there. That um, the thing is that. Um, you know the um, the money urge, you know, fell away, yeah. and um, and once that urge fell away, it's I've uh, I've been in abundance ever since, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but I, I think there's like um, a lot of even musicians to artists I like. They're normally the ones whose focus isn't on the mainstream or isn't on money. Mm. And they're always the ones who are doing something far more interesting. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. the yeah. goal isn't, yeah. you know, yeah. cash. Yeah, no. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, you can you can sense it in a, in, a, yeah. in art, you know, those that um, are putting their heart and soul, yeah. Yeah. you know, into it. And yeah. struggling most of the time. Oh, of course. Struggling, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. you know, absolutely. as well. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and it just shows in the art, you know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I remember years ago, um, I had this business partner, and um, she took some of my art to um, oh, one of them, Saatchi and Saatchi, right? right. Well. And um, they said they, they they really liked the art. But the trouble is, it wasn't dark enough for them. Okay. So, so I thought, so well, well, you know. Yeah. Jeepers, eh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But that's the trouble. Now, that is, you know, the sad thing when you when you look at um, a lot of these office blocks and stuff. It's really not inspiring art. It's kind mm. of, um, I safe. think, it's, well, safe. Or I think it's it's supposed to be that um, controversial in some way and okay, yeah. something like that, rather than it be inspiring. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, you've been you've been in kind of here you are, right, Hilatara. You're like we're looking out at fields, and trees, and there's sacred wells and stones. Well, you've been to the States, haven't you? You did like a massive exhibition there years ago. Oh, yeah. Well, I had a gallery in Chicago. Yeah, you yeah. you ran a gallery? or what No, was uh, well, I had a business partner who ran a gallery, a Courtney Davis gallery in a Chicago. Courtney Davis gallery? Yeah. When was yeah. that? Oh, crikey. That must have been, um, um, that must have been like 1990 or something around about. That kind of thing. What, what was that like? Was it kind of... Was it still? Did you still have that same, a lot of that same feeling? Like, well, or was uh, it? Um, it was. Um, I mean, I was creating books like Articultia and stuff like that. So, and so that was the, a big book. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah so it, there was um, there was a lot of feeling in the art that I was kind of creating, and um, so I mean, it was very nice. You know, at, there being a gallery there, and they would have um, police either side of the door on special occasions you know wow. and all this kind of business and um but it was like um it just felt like people were buying it as wallpaper yeah rather than um you know what the, what the painting actually mm. meant which is you a know? bit disheartening yeah yeah i yeah. remember uh, being in art college years ago Many thanks to the wonderful Sean Fitzgerald for our time together. I've added Sean's contact details below and his site and his art is well worth the visit. 
humble thanks from this aging silverhead mystic for all your kindness and support. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like if you enjoyed my video. Please leave any comments and suggestions below or contact me via the Spirit of Kill to your website. As always, may your lights shine.